Hi, hello, welcome to the third lecture on behavioral modeling and content marketing. And in this lecture, I am going to develop on a specific issue, which is the connection between the use of social media and mental health. Uh, I know that some of you, given the age you are, my students, uh, you could be reluctant to talk about it because I know that young people are very heavily involved with the use of social media. Yet the topic is there. It is like an objectively existing phenomenon, that connection between mental health and the use of social media. And we are going briefly to discuss it because it is very much connected to the role of artificial intelligence in social media. And, and secondly, I wanted to show you like a piece of science because this course, this course of behavioral modeling and content marketing, among others, is supposed to teach you like the scientific way of thinking. And I wanted to give you like the first glimpse of real, actual, current, fresh science because we are going to talk about two scientific papers, two scientific articles, both published this year. So both published in 2020. Okay, let's, vo let's waltz, let's see what I have for you. So here, the first paper I want to talk about is the one that you can see here. The title is uh, Social Media and Mental Health Among Early Adolescents in Sweden. A longitudinal study with two-year follow-up. And uh, the second one is entitled Investigating Mediated Effects of Fear of COVID-19 and COVID-19 Misunderstanding in the Association Between Problematic Social Media Use, Psychological Distress and Insomnia. Just for your information, uh, in this second paper, uh, let's say the, the sample of people observed uh, has been taken from Iran because that whole research was essentially conducted in Iran whilst the first one was in Sweden. So I go back to that window with uh, the PowerPoint presentation and I briefly go through the main points of that whole research. Uh, so we study those two pieces of published science and uh, I am talking about published science because here comes like the first lesson about published science in that slide here. And of course, as always, with that video, you have a PowerPoint presentation that sort of comes along. So in the description box below the video, you can click on the link and uh, download the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, in that window here, you can see, I will magnify it a bit, how uh, you normally reference uh, a scientific article. So here are the authors, the year, the title, then the platform. In this case, in this case the first platform is the Journal of Adolescent Health. And in the second one, uh, it is Internet Interventions. And here, under both of them, you have a link, doi.org. DOI stands for Digital Object Identifier. And commonly, when a new scientific article is published, it like, routinely gets a DOI identifier uh, uh, attributed. And each scientific paper published has a unique DOI link. So now the question that we are treating, uh, or in other words, the hypothesis that is being posited in those two papers. Uh, does the use of social media, especially intense one, negatively affect mental health, particularly in young people? So the the answer given by that research in Sweden is that the intensity of using social media by Swedish adolescents seems to be correlated positively with the incidence of mental disorders. 
which means that adolescents with higher probability of such disorders tend to use social media more heavily than those mentally more robust ones. Still, when uh, that correlation between mental disorders and the use of social media, when it gets decomposed in two fields, so into differences between people on the one hand and change in the same person over time, then we can see what is summed up in that second sentence that when an adolescent person increases their starting point intensity of using social media, that change is not correlated longitudinally with an increased incidence of mental disorders. In other words, in that sample that they studied in Sweden, adolescents with a greater propensity or with a greater proclivity to have mental disorders are on average spending more time on social media than their counterparts who are, let's say, more robust mentally. Still, starting from that baseline and over that two-year window of observation that they applied in this case, there is no correlation. I mean, when somebody increases their, the intensity or increases the, the time spent per day on social media, broadly speaking, including all kinds of blogs. So when they increase that time, it doesn't increase their proclivity to mental disorders. Now, the second paper, Lean et others, comes to the conclusion that the intense use of social media gives rise to mental distress. Still, as you will be able to read in those papers if you download the full texts from the links provided in the last slide, so if you read those full papers, you will see that in the second case, uh, that research uh, in Iran was conducted over just two weeks, not over two years as the research in Sweden. So here we have essentially two different methods of studying human behavior, two ways, uh, lateral and longitudinal. It is good for you to like learn that vocabulary if you want to go deeper in science. Let me just fit the size into the screen so as you give you as to give you the best experience possibly. Okay, so so that first paper, Bires et al. Uh, in Sweden, they distinguish between the change that occurs in a person over time on the one hand and the change, and this is a longitudinal observation. So when I observe someone that happens, uh, 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 excuse me, when I observe something that happens to a person over a relatively long time, this is a longitudinal study. It is as if I were following someone for a, a relatively long period of time. On the other hand, when I just compare people between them without really extending that observation in time, then I have what is called a lateral observation. Lateral comes, uh, comes from side. Hmm? So you remember that in social sciences, in social research, and basically in those projects that you are supposed to prepare in that course of behavioral modeling and content marketing, you can think about those two ways of studying either your own behavior or other people's behavior. You can study longitudinally, so you can study what happens over time to the same person, or you can study laterally, so you can compare many people between them and correlate that comparison with, for example, the way they use social media or any, and any form of online content. And you just remember, in terms of science, that observing differences between humans is something distinct from observing behavioral change occurring in time. So now if we sort of sum up uh, the findings of those two papers, uh, so if I try to trace like a common denominator, 
social media platforms, practically all platforms of social media are equipped with artificial intelligence. Essentially, the people whom you have a suggestion to connect, the kind of advertising that you see on social media, the, the, even the kind of posts that you can see on social media, it is sort of served to you by an algorithm of artificial intelligence. And this is one of the main concerns about uh, social media is that they create a phenomenon called the echo chamber. Excuse me, I will reduce the font here a little bit. They create a phenomenon called the uh, echo chamber. So it is a situation when essentially you are, excuse me, I am meddling a little bit too much with that. Uh, so it is a situation when you are confronted with something that you want to be confronted with. Uh, artificial intelligence used in social media is like a slave. A slave who is smarter than their master. So the slave tries to be perfect and with the time that slave sort of isolates the master from the external world. And this is what happens when you intensively you, when you intensely use social media. You get somehow isolated from points of view or behaviors of worldviews which are radically different from yours. And when I sum up those two papers, uh, which I signal to you, artificial intelligence at work in social media is somehow accommodative of people with mental disorders. And this is interesting uh, because practically all most or, or most of the social institutions that we humans have historically formed, all those institutions are rather exclusive towards the people with mental disorders. It is like a, a staple thing in psychiatry. If a psychiatrist wants to know if a person is mentally like healthy or if they are mentally deranged, the first thing that a psychiatrist checks are the social relations of a person. This is important to know, uh, especially in terms of behavioral observation. Um, that uh, your relations or uh, generally a person's relations uh, with their immediate social environment, so their emotional bonds with their family and friends on the one hand, and their social role in the broader social environment, these social connections are informative about mental health. Uh, once I had the opportunity to talk to a psychiatrist who said, look, if you are deeply convinced that you are an incarnation of Napoleon Bonaparte, but you have a good job, you have good emotional relations with your family and friends, you can just as well live the rest of your life uh, being convinced that you are Napoleon Bonaparte. It doesn't hurt. On the, on the other hand, if you have troubles with finding or keeping a job, if you have trouble to form emotional bonds with other people, and in the same time, you are convinced that you are perfectly sane. Well, here comes the unpleasant surprise. You are not because those deranged social relations usually are informative about a deranged mental health. Uh, and here comes that issue with the social media. Social media or digital social media seems to be historically the first uh, platform of social interactions between humans which seems to favor people with mental disorders. And this is something that even now we have hard times to wrap our mind around. It is really interesting, maybe lightly and maybe slightly scary. Okay, so this is all in that third lecture on behavioral modeling and content marketing. As usually, I wish you to have fun with science and to have fun with life. Bye.